Hello, and welcome back to the Well Storied podcast, where I translate articles from the Well Storied blog into audio so you can listen in on the go. Or as you're watching the Olympics, which is something I have been doing quite a bit of in the past week. Guys, I'm Kristen Kiefer, and thank you so much for joining me today. Today, we are diving back into the blog archives to cover a topic and an article that I originally wrote several years ago, and that is how to title your novel. This is something that I think a lot of us struggle with, trying to come up with the perfect title for our story, so I think it's really good that I've kind of gone back, updated that article, and now that I've transformed it into audio so you can listen in as well, I'm really excited to share this one with you. So, without any further ado, if you would like to listen in as you read, just head on over to well-storied.com slash title. I will also leave that link for you in the episode description below. So let's get started. How to title your novel. Choosing the perfect title for a story is tough. There's no real process to it, no formula. Or is there? Despite being one of my most requested articles, I delayed writing this piece on titling because I never quite knew what tips I had to offer. The whole process seemed so subjective. But the other week, I had a revelation. There is far more of a science to choosing the perfect book title than I'd suspected. After studying book titles pretty intensively these past few weeks, I realized that whether a book is plot or character-driven has a big impact on how it's titled. It sounds strange, right? But the data doesn't lie, writer. So if you're struggling to choose the perfect title for your latest story, buckle in. You are going to love today's breakdown. How to name a character-driven story. Are you writing a character-driven piece? Me too. When I began brainstorming my book's title, I turned to other character-driven stories for inspiration and discovered an interesting pattern. Character-driven stories are often named after the protagonist or the themes revealed through the protagonist's story arc. And this makes sense, right? Character-driven stories explore the theme through the protagonist's development over the course of the story. It stands to reason that the story would likely be named after one of these two vital elements. Here are a few popular examples to rest my case. Character-driven novel titles that are based in their theme. Pride and Prejudice and Persuasion by Jane Austen. If I Stay by Gail Foreman. Atonement by Ian McEwan. Voices by Ursula Le Guin. The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. And Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. And here are a few character-driven novel titles that are based on the protagonist's name or identity. Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Bitter Blue by Kristen Cashore, The Martian by Andy Weir, The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, Carrie by Stephen King, The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak, Finnegan of the Rock by Melina Marchetta, Life of Pi by Jan Martell, Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor, and The Healer's Apprentice by Melanie Dickerson. Now friends, it is your turn. If you're writing your own character-driven novel, ask yourself these title brainstorming questions. What themes do I explore in my novel? How do these themes expand into thematic statements? What is another name or phrase for my story's theme? Such as, our destinies becomes our stars. What is my protagonist's name? Who is my protagonist in relation to other major characters? Such as, the daughter of Smoke and Bone. Does my protagonist have an occupation or a hobby? What do other characters call my protagonist? What title might my protagonist bear? I would also like to point out at this point that if you aren't sure what the difference is between a character-driven or a plot-driven novel, or if you're not sure what your story's themes are or thematic statements are, I have links for those articles that break down each of those topics in depth inside today's transcript and original article at well-storied.com title. So if you're unsure of any of those topics, make sure to stop where you are, head on over, and check out those articles today. Now let's talk about plot-driven stories. Unfortunately, plot-driven stories aren't quite as easy to categorize as character-driven ones. The majority of these stories fall into one of seven categories rather than a simple pair, which may may make the naming of your plot-driven story a bit trickier, but certainly not impossible. 
Let's break down these seven categories below. First up, we have plot-driven novel titles that are based on the plot-defining secondary characters in the story, such as The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. The Alchemist by Paolo Colo. I am pretty sure I just butchered that name, please forgive me. The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. And The Giver by Lois Lowry. Next up, we have plot-driven novel titles based on a, the name of a group of people, such as The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien, The Magicians by Lev Grossman, American Gods by Neil Gaiman, The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater, and Uglies by Scott Westerfield. Now we have plot-driven novel titles based on unusual settings, such as Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton, The Two Towers by J.R.R. Tolkien, Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak, The Reptile Room by Lemony Snicket, and Under the Dome by Stephen King. Now we have plot-driven novel titles based on a momentous event, such as The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins, Red Rising by Pierce Brown, Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien, The Air Affair by Jasper Ford, and The Last Battle by C.S. Lewis. Next up, plot-driven novel titles based on an object of importance, such as The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman, Stardust by Neil Gaiman, The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown, and Dragonfly in Amber by Diana Gabaldon. Next, we move on to plot-driven novel titles that are based on a meaningful phrase from the book, such as Beautiful Creatures by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll, A Game of Thrones by George R.R. R. Martin, and The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold. And finally, plot-driven novel titles that are based on motifs from the book, which include examples like Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo and Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. Now, my friend, it is your turn. If you are writing a plot-driven story, now is the time to pull out a piece of paper and begin brainstorming using the categories we already broke down. If you're lucky, the perfect title may jump out at you straight away, but don't expect this to happen. Most often, the perfect title takes time. If you're struggling, ask yourself what lies at the crux of your story. What element, if removed, would utterly deflate your story's plot? For example, without the Hunger Games, Katniss wouldn't have had to volunteer as tribute to save her sister. Neither would the Pevensey children have found their way to Narnia if the lion, the witch, or the wardrobe didn't exist. Once you've defined the crux of your own story, it's time to mull it over for a bit. Play around with the words and phrases that encapsulate it. Have some fun! It may take some time, but I have no doubt you'll find the winning title before long. But what happens and what do you do if your title doesn't follow this method? No worries, writer. Not a single one. There simply is no firm right or wrong when it comes to titling a book, especially given the influence of popular marketing trends. While, it, while I encourage you to choose as timeless a title as possible, know that it doesn't have to fit within the mold we outlined today in order to prove successful. Just take a look at these popular titles beginning with Brooklyn by Colm Toibin. I might have butchered that name as well, and I so, so apologize to all the people of Ireland. <laughs> this award-winning, character-driven novel is named after its setting, rather than its protagonist or theme, as the se setting itself is symbolic of growth and change, two of the themes the novel explores. Next up, we have Shutter Island by Dennis Lehane. Similarly to Brooklyn, Shutter Island is a character-driven book whose setting represents one of the biggest themes its protagonist's character arc explores, insanity. Next up, we have Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice. This character-driven novel is titled after the event at the crux of its plot, rather than its protagonist or theme, perhaps because the event itself is so strange that it was sure to grab readers' attention. And finally, we have Sabriel by Garth Nix. Despite its plot-driven nature, Sabriel is named after its protagonist because of her goal within the story, to maintain her identity even as she's called upon to take up a new and dangerous role. In addition to titles that break the mold, some are simply more complex, combining elements from two or more of the categories we already discussed. Think you might like to choose a similar title? Here are a few examples. The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer by Michelle Hodkin. The Old Man in the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. 
The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon by Stephen King, and Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, or really any of the Harry Potter books, of course by J.K. Rowling. And finally, there are some titles that just won't fall into any of the categories we discussed today. If your title doesn't either, don't send it packing straight away. Choose the title that feels right for you and your story, no matter which molds it may or may not break. If you feel as though you'll never be sure, I'd suggest getting a second opinion from a few Facebook readers or fellow writers. Your Right Dream, our well-storied Facebook group, is a great place to start, and you can check that out by searching Your Right Dream on Facebook, which is right as in W-R-I-T-E, rather than left or right. Got it? Great. I wish you all the best of luck with finding the perfect title for your novel writer. Thank you so much for listening in to today's episode of the podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, I know I kind of give the same spiel. I'm in a little bit of a slump at the moment. But I really hope you enjoyed today's episode and that it kind of gave you some inspiration and maybe some food for thought when it comes to picking out the perfect title for your novel. If you have any questions or you would like to run your novel by, uh, your novel's title by me or by any other fellow writers, again, I would encourage you to check out Your Right Dream, our well-storied Facebook group. Everyone in that group is just so, so helpful and I'm also active in that group. So I would definitely be able to see your post asking for a second opinion and to lend my own opinion as well, if that's really something that's important to you. If you enjoyed today's episode of the podcast, it would mean the world to me if you would please give it a like, a rating, a review, whatever it is that you can do from wherever you're listening in from. That would be YouTube or SoundCloud or iTunes or just the well Storied website. And if you have a few extra bucks hanging around each month and you'd like to put it behind a website or a creator that you really believe in and enjoy, and if Well Storied happens to be that place for you, I would love, love, love for you to come on over to Patreon. I have an account there, a Well Storied account, where you can pledge a certain amount of money starting as little as just $1 each month. And that really helps me kind of handle all the expenses that come with running Well Storied, including the podcast, upkeeping the website, all of that good stuff. And it really just kind of helps me um, continue to do this long term and continue to reach new readers and new writers. So head on over to patreon.com slash wellstoried if that's something that you'd in- be interested in getting started in. And um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to contact me at, as well at kristen at well-storied.com. Again, writers, thank you so much for listening in today. I hope you had a fabulous time and that you're feeling very inspired to go tackle your next perfect title for whatever story you may be working on. Thank you for listening, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!